Hi, everyone, and welcome along to UCAT Conference TV. I am Colm Cronin from the Adventures in Advising podcast, and I am delighted uh, this evening. We are recording right at the end of day one to be joined by Dr. David Gray. David, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, thanks, Colm. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, just to say thank you to start with for the great job you're doing with Conference TV and these interviews. They're really adding something to the conference. Well, I, I'm thank you for that. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, to have the opportunity to talk to Celia Greenway and kind of get some insights into her background was, was really cool. And to, for me, added to, to that piece uh, around that opening keynote. But it has been... Uh, I, I think, from my perspective, a really good first day. I, I imagine you uh, have had a, a lot of caffeine probably over the, the last uh, <laughs> few hours, given the work that went into setting it up and then day one. But your thoughts uh, on as the, the CEO of, of UCAT on day one of uh, the conference? Oh, it, absolutely delighted. Um, I mean, this is a fantastic event. There's been such a great vibe around the place today. Um, yeah, you know, there are always busy periods on day one and sorting a few things out at the start. And uh, But overall, it's gone really smoothly. And this is, um, we're delighted. This is the biggest conference UCAT has ever held. Uh, you know, our last conference was only six months ago. There was a chance that we may not attract many people because it's so you know soon after the previous one but no this is by far and away the biggest conference um we've almost doubled the number of delegates that we have at the event um, and that's you know that's that's obvious in the sessions that we've got going on they're so vibrant and so many people in there um and i think we've also taken a del deliberate decision to kind of uh, scale back the schedule a bit so we don't have as many things going on in parallel so that makes the sessions bigger and more vibrant as well um, and there's been such a great buzz and atmosphere in those sessions and some really great discussion going on between the delegates so it's been fantastic to see yeah uh, it has it's, i think the decision to scale back was a good one given like that we are in this virtual space and i think it's the learnings that you know the the virtual space is very different to the physical space and you cannot merely replicate. And I think you, you kind of done that really nicely. And I think the other thing that's added to it, and I had the experience myself today, is the advising hub, the, the gather town environment where you're wandering around and then you see somebody and it's, it feels like that conference feel like I was walking around earlier and I saw George, George Steele. I'm like, George, how's it going? And that really added, I think, that that spontaneous aspect because everything is, you know, kind of so deliberate online ordinarily. So have you had the opportunity to, to go and wander, wander around the advising hub yourself? I have. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I mean, I've been involved in building the advising hub as well. So I've been, you know, sort of in there and using it for a little while now. Um, but yesterday I was trying to uh, I was talking to George myself earlier on um, and I was trying to recount an experience I'd had yesterday when the Dutch delegates were in there and they were using it for the conference. And I saw somebody in the corridor and you're right, it's that spontaneous thing. Um, and, I, and I can't I can't even begin to remember what the, the experience was that I had now, but I saw this person and I thought, that's exactly the same feeling I get when I'm in a real conference venue. You're right, the online is very different, but just being in that gather town environment and seeing those people and engaging in that way, it made me feel like I was really in the conference venue with them and that we were more connected in some way. Um, so it's really great. And we've had loads of fantastic comments from the delegates about how much they're appreciating it um, and the ability to connect and engage in that way. I think um, people are also really motivated by the, by the Easter egg treasure hunt. Uh, people are desperately trying to find the last few Easter eggs that they haven't found. People keep asking me, where are they? And I honestly don't know the answer, so I can't tell you. Uh, they're in there somewhere and, and you will find them. Um, so, um, but no, it's great. It's really, really good to see so many people connecting and engaging with that. And I think our Dutch colleagues are having the same experience as well. So it's, it's a really great environment. Yeah, I love the the fact that it is a shared space, which is great to see. And look, there were loads of great sessions today, but I suppose, um, you know, by the time this is actually released, we're already in, in the future. So I, I'm interested in hearing, you know, from from your perspective, um, and there there is so much to look forward to. But you know, if if you were to to cherry pick a few things that you think um, viewers might want to keep an eye out on on the next uh, in the next couple of days, what are some of just some of the events? Um, 
Okay, well, I can tell you about the event, but actually, I think there's something that, that um, viewers should keep an eye out for, and that's something different that we have at this conference as well, which we haven't had before, and it's a deliberate part of UCAT strategy, and that is we actually have students as delegates. Um, we have uh, around about 8% of our delegates this year are students, and it's really great to get the students involved with their advisors um, in those conversations to help us do what we do better to support advisors, because ultimately, at the end of the day, we serve students. Um, so we need that student voice in what we do. And I know I've been in sessions today where the students have been involved and they've added a great deal to the discussions. So they will be there. They will be in session throughout the rest of the conference. Look out for them and, and make them feel welcome because they are very much a part of this event and we very much need to hear their, their voice and their input. Um, but in terms of specific kind of sessions that, that to look out for, uh, the highlights for me in the next few days are um, tomorrow uh, lunchtime, we have a joint discussion session with our Dutch colleagues from LVSR. So we had a um, symposium with them back in December where we looked at um, how the pandemic had affected um, affected us as advisors, how it, you know, sort of... Uh, impacted upon us um, and really to try and recapture our passion for advising and then we've got a follow-up from that uh, as a joint discussion session tomorrow where we're looking at how how the practices we have of ad as advisors have changed through the pandemic and what the best changes have been so that we can hold on to those so hopefully it's going to be a really lively discussion and one in which that we will we will discover things in common that we've really learned and that have benefited our practice that we can intentionally adopt going forwards so that will be a great opportunity to get together with international delegates um, and then we have our award ceremony tomorrow where we're recognising those who have made great contributions to the field of advising um, or to, to the UCAT itself. Uh, we also recognise all of those who've been given professional recognition through the UCAT professional recognition scheme. So a whole range of people there. Um, and we also have, uh, I think, as Oscar mentioned on a previous episode of Conference TV, uh, the introduction of the Charlie Nuss Award. Um, so we'll be awarding the first Charlie Nutt Award. Uh, so that's going to be a great honour and Charlie will be joining us himself for that. So we're really looking forward to seeing Charlie there tomorrow. Um, and I guess the other um, sort of highlight we have for tomorrow is we have a, a session immediately before the award ceremony with one of our award winners, Neil Bangs from Middlesex University, who's doing a practice showcase session. So Neil's going to be telling us about how his sports science team at Middlesex have really adopted this intentional structured programme of personal tutoring um, and have been kind of enhancing their offering over the last five years where they've got to this point um, with, with group advising and an approach they've taken during the pandemic that has really helped their students feel connected to the programme. So yeah, for me, those are the highlights. Yeah, and, and that's just some of the, the programme of events that uh, lie ahead. So there will be all sorts of, of things for people to look forward to, to engage in. And uh, I will, while we're chatting, put up um, the, you can see the, the kind of social media. So like the conversations I heard today were fantastic and people were so engaged and, uh, you know, really interested in that student perspective that you mentioned, David. So keep the conversations going. In in terms of UCAT and um, LBSA, you can see the joint LinkedIn group there. You can see the conference hashtag. Uh, you can definitely get involved. I saw loads of tweets today, which was fantastic. So it's great to see the level of engagement that we're uh, seeing from people. And uh, I guess at this point, all that really remains is for me to thank you for taking the time, given the hectic schedule that you have, and to wish you the very best for the remainder of the conference. Thanks, Colin, and enjoy the rest of the conference too.